1997 interview with me, Jackie defined her interest in poetic experimentation. The adoption paper she noted was meant to be a narrative book and to use three voices to counterpoint and intermingle and upset each other and disturb each other. I suppose she added, what interests me about being experimental, not in language, is theme. The book was, however, experimental in both. Thematically, it explored questions of identity in striking ways by placing at the center adoption with its impact on differences of biology, race, family history, and in Scotland, highland lowland histories, which are very different, and presumed countries of origin. But she also uses voice in radical ways, counterpointing her adult Scots, her adoptive mother's Glaswegian accents, and her birth mother's highland accented English. Yet her birth mother's voice is imagined in that poem. Kay had not yet met her, but had always created mental and emotional versions of her. So that voice is both in part a separate person and also a part of Jackie herself, her own sense of what it would mean to have given her birth and given her up. The early focus on theme evoked by voices has expanded throughout her work, opening out in a, a phrase from Hugh McDermott to take in more and more of life experience and human diversity and animating her poetry from the earliest to Fury, I'm pronouncing it her way, Bantam, and the extraordinary Hogmanay poem, Farewell. As she affirmed her choice to experiment with the adoption papers, she also specifically intended something new with the poem, Fury. As she noted in an interview on Vimeo, she really likes old forms of Scots and old Scots stanza forms, and wanted in her poem in response to Burns to try and use them whilst trying to do something new with them. In the theme of friendship and women's long mutual support, the allusions to key Burns poems, including the title words sung by people all over the world in Auld Lang Syne, and the centrality of a theory as the strongest family or lovers, she sustains and expands the meaning of identity. She also uses Scott's words and allusions that redefine and complicate what may not immediately appear. I wish to focus here especially on the poems in theory as they reveal two kinds of experimentation, ways her poetry both stays grounded and opens out in new approaches to theme and increasingly the function of language, notably the experimental potential of Scott's words themselves. More specifically, I wish to demonstrate the complexity and originality, I'll get to that in a minute, in what can appear to be and has sometimes been read as straightforward. That is her eye as a protean self, inseparable from word choice in a country with three languages. In an otherwise appreciative and perceptive review of theory, the Guardian nonetheless notes that the poems are notable not so much for their stylistic originality as for her deft use of personal subject matters. The reviewer refers to the title poem's, quote, hectic mix of new and old Scots dialect. I'm not at all sure what was hectic about it. In contrast to Jackie's stated choice to make it new, the reviewer focuses on content while acknowledging the, quote, loving detail, hypnotic rhythms, and unflinching realism of her poems. The use of the vernacular, the, the reviewer claims, quote, serves to bolster the sentiment. The poem may offer nothing especially thought provoking in its cheery address, unquote, but balances sincerity with knowingness and uncertainty. I quote the review to emphasize consistent difficulties in much commentary on modern and contemporary Scottish literature, that it is not formally experimental or new and that it is written in a dialect. But that is to miss the ways in which it is experimental, as well as the fact that Scots is no more or less a dialect than the English of England. 